Hello and welcome to Family Worship. I'm Shelley Quinn. I'm J.D. Quinn. Happy Sabbath. Yes, you know. Love this time. Oh, me too. I am totally convinced that if God hadn't gifted us with the Sabbath, we'd work ourselves to death. I know you would. <laughs> well, we have a program tonight that I think you're going to find delightful. The title of the program is the Holy Spirit, our greatest need. But let me introduce our special guest. We have with us Dr. David Shin and his lovely wife, Tennille. David, tell us where you are right now. Well, we're on the campus of Wachita Hills College in Amity, Arkansas. We just moved there last October. And so this is a little transition from pastoral ministry to administration. And you are serving as the president of Washington Hills College. Well, that's well, correct. I'm so excited. I know that that's a, a very blessed college. And then my lovely <laughs> Tennille, you have a master's in social work, but yeah. you're getting uh, some practice as a mama. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Tell us about Hudson and Clara. Okay. Um, so Hudson is our nearly four-year-old. Okay. And um, we just had Clara last year, so she's um, nine months. Oh, and yeah. they're just darling. They're little mini me's. Uh -oh. <laughs> Hudson uh -oh. looks just like David, and Clara <laughs> looks just like Mama. <laughs> well, before we begin, would you like to have our prayer, David? Yes, I'd be honored. Father in heaven, we thank you for the promise of the Holy Spirit. Yes. We thank you that the Holy Spirit brings all other blessings in his train. Yes. We thank you that through the Holy Spirit, that Jesus can abide in our hearts by faith. We thank you that the Holy Spirit brings with him the fruit of the Spirit. And we pray that day by day, all of us would become a, a loving and lovable Christian by your Amen. grace. We ask for the Holy Spirit to guide our thoughts. Lord, you promise that the Holy Spirit is the divine teacher, and we ask that the Holy Spirit would inspire and instruct as we open the Word of God on this beautiful Sabbath. For we ask these things in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. 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 You know, I want to just Amen. take a quick detour because this thought just came to my mind. I want to read John 14 and verse 16. Jesus said, well, we'll begin with 15 just because that puts it into context so you know where to look for it. Jesus said in John 14, 15, we'll come back to this one, but if you love me, keep my commandments and I will pray the Father and he will give you another helper that he may abide with you forever. In the Greek, another helper is allos Parakletos. It is another advocate, another comforter. It is the same. And when he says the word allos means Jesus is saying, I'm going to send one who is exactly like me. Mm -hmm. He isn't another like if you said that there's two words in the Greek for another. It's not like you want another piece of fruit and you, maybe you had an apple. You say, I'll have an orange. No, he's saying, I will send you someone who is exactly like me. And that is our greatest need as a Christian is to have the allos paracletos, the other helper living in us. Mm -hmm. You have a wonderful quote, David, mm. from Tozer. Would you share that with yes. us? Yes. If the Holy Spirit were taken away today from our church, 95% of what we would do would continue and no one would notice the difference. If the Holy Spirit had withdrawn from the early church, then 95% of what they were doing would have stopped and everyone would have noticed the difference. Wow. You know, that, that's an eye-opener to think that. And how true. It, it, so many churches are operating and have all kinds of missions and projects, but the Holy Spirit's not the one directing them. And here he's saying, 95% of what we would do would continue even without the Holy Spirit, but not so in the early time. I'm going to kick this off and then we're going to let our, our guest have something. Why is the Holy Spirit our greatest need? Let's look at that. In I, One of my favorite scriptures is Ephesians 3, 16 through 21. Mm -hmm. Paul is praying for the Ephesians. 
And you know what he says in Ephesians 3, 16? He's praying to God and then quote, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might, with, in, in the Greek, what's that word? Dunamis. Dunamis, the, the dynamite power. How? Through his spirit in the inner man. So right there, we know that when the Holy Spirit is in us, we've got that dynamite power of God operating in us. But then he says in verse 17, that, now, now let, me, let me say something. Anytime you see that or so that, it's a purpose statement. So Paul's saying, I want you to be strengthened with a dynamite power of God in the spirit, in your inner man, that for this purpose, that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. If we don't have the Holy Spirit, Christ isn't dwelling in our hearts through faith. And then he says the purpose for having him dwell in our hearts through faith that for this purpose, you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width and the length and the depth and the height to know the love of God which passes knowledge that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Mm. So here's my question for you all. Mm. When did you... I know when it happened for you, but when did you all learn how important the Holy Spirit was? Mm. When did you in your own personal life experience that transition of being a nominal Christian or someone who's trying with all your might and realize, do you remember when it happened? Mm. Mm. I think for me, uh, I had been in the church my entire life, growing up in the church, and it wasn't until about 17, 18 that I accepted the Lord as my Savior. And it was transformational. And we know, according to this passage, that the Holy Spirit brings transformation. Yes. It's, it's within us, yes. inside out. And I, I know that conversion is being born of the Spirit. Amen. That, that's, that's how conversion begins. And in the agricultural model that Jesus referred to many times, he equated or the analogous relationship between the growth of a plant and the growth of the Christian life. And for the seed to germinate, it requires water. Yes. And in the Hebrew agricultural culture, uh, the, the, the cyclical year, it was the early rain that enabled that seed to germinate and that's conversion. Amen. It's the continual daily rain that, w that enables that Christian, uh, that, that seed uh, to, to grow. And then the latter rain is that last, that last rain that pushes that, that, that plant to, to the harvest. And in my life, it was the germination of that seed that was dead in trespasses mm -hmm. and sins. The Holy Spirit, uh, through the power of God, enabled a dead, dead entity to the miracle of a new life. And it is a miracle. It is. So that's, that's the experience of, of the Christian. And, and that's why Jesus said to Nicodemus, unless you're born of water and the spirit, Amen. you shall not see the kingdom of God. Amen. It's so, it's so counterintuitive that you have to die to live. Isn't that, mm -hmm. you know, and boy, there for a while, I don't know if I really understood that. Mm -hmm. you know, you and just, what do you mean by die to live? We die to whom? To self. To self. To yes, live let's make God. that perfectly clear. Thank yeah. you, Shelley. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. But to, no, it's die to self. Yeah. That old stinking self in there that's uh, really, it's selfish and it wants to do things my way, prideful, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And we still, well, I know in my life, I still mm -hmm. combat that. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. uh, boy, mm -hmm. it's filled with the fullness of God, to know that that is even an option mm -hmm. to me is just, uh, thank you, Jesus. And I know that, uh, go ahead, Shelley. No, I, I was just going to ask Tanil, did you grow up as a Christian? You grew up in a Christian I home? Did. I did, yeah. I was um, baptized at age nine and um, man, fourth or fifth generation Adventist actually. Um, but so I, you know, there's, 
there's moments in my in, in, in my Christian journey where maybe um, my spiritual life wavered a bit, but I feel like I've always been grounded in that decision at nine. Um, but as far as like feel, you know, that Holy Spirit power, I think I liked what you said, JD. It's like whenever you're there's moments, right? Like say as a mom where, you know, I'm on my last nerve. <laughs> um, you know, I mean, we just had a baby, right? We've had a move. We've had big things happening in our life. And so lots of change and upheaval and um, times where my three-year-old's not his best self and then I'm not my best self as my mom, as the mom. And um, where it's just, you are, I I have, all I can do is turn to God and Amen. prayer and say, Lord, take over, you know, give me that Holy Spirit power. And I love that might. It's that might. The, the, yes. what, word, what word did you use? Dunamis. Dunamis, you know. Uh, I love that. And in that inner man to take over. And I feel like in those moments, it is almost like just you feel it. You feel that Holy Spirit power in your inner man that allows you to make the right decision even though your emotions might be you know ready to erupt or whatever you know to make the decision to be calm be steady um or other things you know just it's that it's that holy spirit power that that helps you make the right decision when you may be tempted to um amen yeah yeah and you know we're going to get to this that the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, it's not a one and done. We're going to get mm -hmm. to that. But right. it is the idea of, uh, you know, I remember the first time I saw this because I always think about, you know, Jesus took on our flesh. God became a man, took on our human nature. How was he resurrected? How did he ascend? He was a man. He is the last Adam. He's standing at the throne of God. He ascended in our flesh. So somebody asked me once, well, does that mean he lost his omnipresence? He still has his omnipresence through the Holy Spirit, doesn't he? Because they are one. And this says so clearly, Christ dwells in our hearts through faith. Mm -hmm. By the power of the Holy Spirit. David, why don't you do 1 John 3, 24? 1 John 3, 24. Now, mm -hmm. he who keeps his commandments abides in him, and he in him. And by this we know he abides in us by the Spirit whom he has given us. This is a fascinating passage because what the Bible brings out is that when Jesus came to this earth, he divested himself by choice of certain attributes of God. One of them was omnipresence. Yes. Uh, he could not be everywhere at once. He was in Palestine. He wasn't in North America. He wasn't in South America. He was walking in Palestine for his entire life. And then he went to heaven. And you can see that there's this partnership that takes place within the Godhead. Mm -hmm. this, this beautiful self-deferentiating partnership in which they always uplift the other entity in the Godhead. Amen. The humility is The humility. Amazing. Can you imagine in the Godhead if there's selfishness? I mean, we'd be, yeah. it, it, mm -hmm. the universe would be a mess. Three um, you know, all powerful entities that saying, you know what? It's all about me. It's all about me. But the beauty of it is that when Jesus came, he said, look, it's all about the Father. It's all about the Father. And then when the Holy Spirit comes, he says, hey, it's all about Jesus. Mm -hmm. It's all about Jesus. It's not as though they come on the scene and say, oh, it's all about me now. It's all yeah. about me. It's always about the other entity in the Godhead. And here you see Jesus goes to heaven and he says, look, I'm sending you the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And the Holy Spirit says, look, it's all about Jesus. Mm -hmm. It's all about Jesus. And what Jesus bought at Calvary was pardon and power. Amen. And it's through the entity of the Holy Spirit that we have power in our day-to-day -day lives. That's why it's Christ in us, Amen. the hope of the glory. Hope. So even though Jesus is in heaven, through the entity of the Holy Spirit, through the person of the Holy Spirit, he is able to be everywhere at once. And the power that Jesus attained at Calvary is now infused into you and me. Oh, I not can only do all at things. Yeah, not only at <laughs> conversion, but at every yes. step of our experience yeah, that we can tap into that power through the Holy Spirit. So the question is, how is Jesus able to be in us? 
The answer is here, through the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Through the Holy Spirit. So, the so, Holy, so yeah. he is our definitely our greatest oh, need. Oh, he's our greatest mm -hmm. need. So if you want Jesus in us, it's, it's through the Holy Spirit. That's yeah. why he's our greatest need because Jesus Christ in you, the hope of glory, is only made possible through the Holy Spirit. And you're quoting when yeah. you say that Colossians yes. 1.27, yes. that where Paul told the Colossians, your only hope of glory is having Christ in you. So that's that's why he's so important. Um, honey, you want to take Romans 5.5? 5, 5? Sure. Romans 5.5. 5. The Holy Spirit fills us with the essence of God's nature, his sacrificing love. Self-sacrificing, yeah. Now hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. You know, to me, I remember I was, I was teaching in, in Mark 12, 30, where Jesus said, this is the greatest commandment. Love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, with all of your mind, with all of your strength. And it's like, Lord, I can't do that. Not in my flesh, I can't. So I learned to pray and say, Lord, think about this. If God is love, the Holy Spirit, being God, mm -hmm. is a spirit of love. Mm -hmm. And God pours his love, his divine love, his self-sacrificing love into our hearts by the power of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. So the only way that I can love God with all my strength is if the Holy Spirit's in me. Mm -hmm. And the same for loving my neighbor as myself. So to me, having Christ or God dwell in our hearts, man, that's a super powerful one. Mm -hmm. And the and Romans uses the word poured into yes. our hearts, which which in the sanctuary has has implications because the priest, which represents Jesus, every day would bring oil. Yes. into the holy place and he would pour mm -hmm. oil into the candlesticks and you know in revelation the candlesticks represent us the church he pours and pours and the oil represents the holy spirit, the spirit. so beautiful mm -hmm. beautiful um, typology here and here paul says that when the when the holy spirit's poured in he brings him with him the love of god i would have beautiful mm -hmm. in other words we don't have to fabricate this absolutely in terms of our sanctification experience, which is in the holy place of the sanctuary, which is where God makes us holy. It's God makes us holy. And the Sabbath is we rest in the reality that God makes us holy. And look at how it happens, pouring in the Spirit Amen. on a daily basis, which mm -hmm. is giving us the love of God. Beautiful. Amen. Amen. Beautiful. Amen it Amen. is. All right. Mm -hmm. So our next point. Here we've seen that we need the indwelling of the Holy Spirit so that we can have Christ in our hearts, the hope of glory, know the love of God and express the love of God. But we also need the Holy Spirit to even understand God's word. Tanil, you want to take 1 Corinthians 2? Sure. Yeah, 1 Corinthians 2, 12 through 14. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. These things we also speak, not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. You know, one thing that I do, and I know this is, Hmm. our habit is the first thing when I open my eyes, I ask the Lord to be filled afresh with his mm. Holy Spirit. We pray it at night. I pray this throughout the day. Mm -hmm. But I try to remember always when I open up the Bible to read, I always try to remember to pray for the Holy Spirit to guide me. I remember recently I was studying something and it was like, what, Lord, I don't, and then I realized, I didn't pray for the Holy Spirit. That, that morning I would just jump into something. Mm -hmm. And can we understand God's word without the Spirit of God? No. Yeah. yeah. Okay. No, it's impossible. 
it's impossible to understand the Bible without the Holy Spirit, which is a humbling thought. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah, it's a, it's a humbling thought because it's not like geometry or calculus in terms of we go in there with our own IQ and try to wrestle and get to the truth or the ideas. When it comes to the Bible, God has leveled the playing field. Praise the Lord. Amen. He didn't say, look, you need an IQ of 140 and above to understand this. He says, no, 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 no. You come with humility mm -hmm. and say, Lord, because prayer implies help. I need help. I need the Holy Spirit. I need the divine teacher to help me. And, and then Paul says, spiritual things are spiritually discerned. And the beauty of it is you could, be, you could have a third grade education and say, Lord, I need help. And he says, I'm going to give it to you. You could have a PhD and be arrogant and prideful and say, I don't need any help. And you won't be able to understand it. You'll see nothing but contradictions. That's the way the, the nature of God's Word. I never thought about that before as leveling the playing field, mm -hmm. but I've got the perfect story to go with what you just said. We were in a very small church. There was a little man mm -hmm. that he would get up to read during Sabbath school panel, and he always sit next to me because I'd have to tell him almost every other word. He was not a good reader. I think he had a seventh grade education perhaps, or, and I don't even know if he got that far. Very country. And he started reading the Bible, praying for the Holy Spirit. Long story short, this man, when he was first telling me, he says, my daughter drinks. And he said, and I told her what that scripture said, that you're going to go straight to hell if you do that. And I said, wait a minute, wait a minute. You can't beat somebody over the head with a fiddle to convince them how beautiful the music is. You can't beat somebody over the head with the Word of God. You have to show the love of God. So he started reading. This man grew mm. so much when he started praying for the whole... I mean, his vocabulary grew, his character changed, the way he approached things. But then at the same time, I was doing some meetings in uh, Central Texas. There was a lady who came who had a THD, that's a, a doctorate in theology. Hmm. And she would come to my meetings. And she, uh, at first somebody said, when she said, well, what could I learn from her? Long story short, do you remember? This, is, <laughs> this poor woman had no idea who the Holy Spirit was. Hmm. She didn't understand the Word of God. She was gruff, had great wrinkles here. She had no friends. She was, dare I say, mean-spirited. Mm -hmm. And so it was her ideas of what the Bible said, even though she got her doctorate, mm -hmm. were so far off. Mm -hmm. She couldn't understand because she hadn't been introduced mm -hmm. to the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. So that's one of our great needs for the Holy Spirit is if we're going to understand God's Word, we have to have the Holy Spirit. Now, well, it's not only that, it's dealing with, if you're praying for someone, hmm. we get all these calls in. Yeah. And hmm. they, you know, the old saying, that's above my pay grade. Hmm. I mean, they'll, they'll, they'll call in with, with, with requests that break your heart. Hmm. And where do you go? Because really, you just got a big question mark there. Hmm. Mm -hmm. And then, says, listen, why don't we invite the Holy Spirit in? Mm -hmm. And it's just, this is what brought me the closest because of the way that I process information. Mm -hmm. He showed me, because I got to uh, still appreciate this daily on the front line of how he came in and took those things that I probably could not have discerned. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then the right words started coming out of your mouth. Words that, first time I'd ever heard these words, my mm -hmm. mind didn't even work that way. Mm -hmm. These were his words. And then I begin to find out that we're just frames. Mm -hmm. He uses our hands. He uses our mouth mm -hmm. because we got to get this out. We got to be uh, helpful and so. And boy, the Holy Spirit is as real as real. I mean, you know, you take that to the bank, mm -hmm. and it's oh. there available. You know, that just said, "Oh Lord, help mm -hmm. me." Mm -hmm. and, and you know, I love your humility in that he always invites the Holy Spirit to pray. Mm -hmm. But when he came here and started praying with others, 
his trajectory and spiritual growth was just like this. Mm. It was so mm. amazing. Mm. So, honey, why don't you read Romans 8, 26? Because what is one of our great needs of the Holy Spirit? It's to lead us in our prayers. Okay. <laughs> Likewise, the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, also helps in our weaknesses. Oh, my goodness. For we do not know, we do not know what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit Himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Mm. Wow. Mm. That is so true, you know. The board, just the right words at the right situations just this command. Shelley was uh, in one of her uh, one of her meetings, I remember she says, Lord, empty me and fill me with you. Mm. Mm -hmm. yeah. Boy, that was bingo. Mm -hmm. That was kind of like Wow, that makes all the sense in the world. Get this junk out, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and I give you permission to fill me with you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And he's, he has ears to hear. He's mm -hmm. listening. Mm -hmm. And he says, I can help that young man. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so then there's that passing the baton, you might mm -hmm. say, in a, mm -hmm. in, a, in a weak way. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, yes, he helps us in our weaknesses. Mm -hmm. he, he makes us strong. Mm -hmm. the, the affirming part of this passage for me is that there's times when I'm praying and I don't have the words to mm. articulate my heart. Mm. It, you, you, you're going through mm. something and you can't even say or describe. And I'm so glad for this passage because God's not up there and saying, oh, I, I misunderstood. Yeah. Uh, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. Uh, yes. But here, the Holy Spirit's like, he knows our heart, mm. Amen. And, he, and he takes yeah. that and he translates it to intent. Yeah. You know, communication yeah. is such a difficult thing. And uh, how many times have we had a conversation with somebody and they had a misunderstanding that, and, they, and you have to go back and say, oh, that's not what I meant. That's not what I meant, but that's how they interpreted it. But in our prayers, which is very personal, just uh, uh, private, uh, part of our lives that, uh, especially when we're going through something that we can't even describe, is the Holy Spirit's like, I know exactly what you mean, and I'm going to convey that to Jesus, Amen. to the Father, mm -hmm. and so that, that your prayers are answered Amen. with your intentions Amen. that are coming forth. And that's a beautiful mm -hmm. thing. The Holy Spirit's the great translator. Amen. Great translator. Right. And I believe yeah. after the experience I've been through for the last nearly 18 mm -hmm. months now, <laughs> high levels of pain. Mm -hmm. And there were times when I couldn't pray. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was just my mind. And I'd try to pray and I was moaning and sighing, sighing and groaning. groaning. And I believe that the Holy Spirit, God heard that prayer, just your sighs and your moans and the Holy Spirit interceded for me. And then who's standing at the right, or sitting at the right hand of the throne of God? Jesus, who, who our risen Savior, His job is to intercede for us constantly. And it says he is able to save to the uttermost. So, mm. hallelujah, mm. we've got two prayer partners. Amen. <laughs> and I like it says, but the Spirit himself. Mm. He doesn't yeah. send a captain down there or a lieutenant. Mm. He is there yes. himself. He says, mm. I will assist you here. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Okay, let me jump into this one because this is one of my favorite scriptures. Why do we need the Holy Spirit more than anything else? Because only by His power can we change our fleshly nature. We're going to look at Romans 8, 13. Romans 8, 13. Now listen to this. If you live according to the flesh, what's going to happen? I'm going to die. You will die. Mm. What does that mean? If we live just according to fleshly desires, just for the moment, it's saying you're going to experience that permanent second death. You're going to die. Second death. The second death. But, and if you don't know about the second death, just go to Revelation, look that up, and you will find it four times. But if by whom? Spirit. If the by Spirit. the Spirit. Now, notice the juxtaposition of this. If by the Spirit you put to death, I mean, I just think that is 
fabulous right there. Mm. I cannot put to death, well, let me go on and finish it. If by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. What's he saying? I can't put the, the deeds of my flesh, the wrong thinking, the stinking thinking, the sinful, selfish part of me, I can't put that to death. I can't get rid of it. I can't smother it. But guess what? The Holy Spirit isn't going to do it for me in a forceful way. Mm -hmm. He is not going to say, Shelly Quinn, give this up. Mm -hmm. No, that's, he's a gentleman. Mm -hmm. So it says, if by the Spirit you put to death the misdeeds of your flesh, you will live. There is a union, a cooperation. We have to yield. I can't do it by myself, but what I can say is, Oh, Lord, fill me with your spirit. Oh, Lord, I thank you that Psalm 129 verse 4 says that you are righteous. You will cut me free from the court of the wicked that binds me. And I rely on his mm. power. Mm -hmm. hey, I mean, we can't do it on our own, can we? No. Hmm. no. Do you want to comment on that scripture? You said a key word here, cooperation. Yes. Cooperation. And, and this cooperation, if you look at Romans, the way that it's structured, you have Romans 7 in which a person says, look, I, I, I'm having this, this conflict between the flesh and the spirit. I, I, I can't do the things that I want to do, the things that I hate that I do. And then Romans 8 begins with, I praise God that through the Holy Spirit I can walk in the flesh and, and not in the spirit. And walk so, in the spirit, not in the flesh. You that's right. That's I, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the other way. Yeah, yeah. I walk I in the spirit and not in the flesh. Yeah. And, and the Bible presents this picture that after conversion, the flesh and the spirit continue to exist within our nature. It's yes. not as though after conversion, mm -hmm. the, the carnal nature just mm -hmm. goes away. I mean, a part of me wishes that would happen, mm -hmm. but, uh, but it, it still coexists. The difference is now through the Holy Spirit, you're given power. Amen. To, to die to the flesh Amen. and walk in the spirit. But you said the key word, cooperation. It's, it's cooperation yes. and it's mm -hmm. a daily. Yes. That's why it says, I die daily. Amen. And, and that, 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 that struggle is not to, to, to say, look, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just conjure up this, this power in my own strength and my own ability. But it's really saying, Lord, not my will, but thine mm -hmm. be done. And by relying on the power of the Holy Spirit to walk in the spirit and not in the flesh. In Romans 8, the latter part of that says, it's the same spirit that raised Jesus oh. from the mm -hmm. dead. Amen, hallelujah. That, that mm -hmm. is working in our lives to, mm -hmm. to live a victorious life. And that's, that's, that's a lot of power. Mm -hmm. That Amen. same spirit that works in us to, to, to live a victorious life Amen. by His grace. And you know, Tanil, you touched on this mm -hmm. while ago when you said there's times when our circumstances around us are crazy and all of a sudden you're not at your best self. I have found that even though we are to crucify our flesh, to die to self, I have found that the flesh can rear its ugly head. Mm -hmm. Even in, you know, <laughs> I was writing a book and I told my sister, she called every day and I said, I don't have time to talk with you for an hour each day. Uh, call me at five o'clock only. I mean, she'd call five times a day. And so here I am writing a book for the glory of God. And I said to her, don't call mm. unless it's an emergency until five o'clock and I'll take 15 minutes out. The phone would ring and I'd pick it up and I'd say, is this an emergency? No, I was lonesome. And, and so, you know, we go through this several times a day. And so one day she, she said to me, about the third time she called, well, you just don't love me anymore. Oh. You know what happened? I said, I don't love you. You have no respect for me and blah, 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 blah. I hung up oh. and guess what? The Lord is saying, call her back, ask for <laughs> forgiveness, apologize. My flesh reared its ugly head. Mm. And I'm, and before, actually, let me say this, before he told me what I needed to do, I wrote for several more hours. I had pages. And I read it, no anointing. Yeah, wow. No anointing. Yeah. And, and the Lord said, you quenched the spirit. Call her back. Wow. 
wow. ask for forgiveness, mm -hmm. wow. and and then I had. To. So you know what? You don't need to just ask for the Holy Spirit once. Sometimes throughout the day, as you said, when you're praying. Right. Mm -hmm. right. You want to take uh, our next greatest need for the Holy Spirit sure. is He leads us to teach us God's will. Neil? Yes. Um, Psalm 143, 10. Teach me to do your will, for you are my God. Your spirit is good. Lead me in the land of uprightness. Isn't that what you're praying when you're asking God to yes. help you be a mommy? Right, right, absolutely. And it, yeah, it's, it, what is your, yes, it is so true because there are times in parenting or relationship or any type of dynamic where you're faced with, um, what is God's will here, right? Um, I get that question a lot, you know, with young people, you know, we're at a college where a lot of students are asking, you know, what is God's will for my life? What is God's, who, you know, who's, what's God's will for uh, this relationship or, um, but especially like, where is God leading me, right? Yes. And we can't know that unless we have that indwelling Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Mm -hmm. Teach and, me to do your will Amen. and lead and, and, me in the land of uprightness. And, and why and, is it important that we're led by the Holy Spirit? What does Romans 8, 14 say? <laughs> yeah. That for as many as led by the Spirit, by the Holy Spirit, that they're the sons of God. And, and that's a covenant Amen. term. I mean, yes. it's 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 an, a term of inheritance. It doesn't mean that it's a male. It's mm -hmm. it's the children of Amen. God. Mm -hmm. But if he says, as this is Romans eight fourteen, as many as are led by mm -hmm. the Spirit mm -hmm. of God are the sons of God. Mm -hmm. What does that mean if you're not led by the Spirit of God? Mm -hmm. That you're not a son of God. Amen. That you're not a son of mm -hmm. God. And the thing about God's leading is that Jesus said that the Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. Amen. And he also said, thy word is truth. Mm -hmm. So we can't uh, bifurcate or, or separate Amen. God's leading through the spirit yeah. or, or God's leading through the word. Mm -hmm. uh, exactly. Some people may, mm -hmm. may pit the spirit against the word and they say, oh, the spirit isn't telling me to do that, even though it's right there in the word. Well. God's Spirit is speaking to us through the Word. And, 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 and He'll never lead us any other way. Absolutely. Except because yeah. who wrote, the, who inspired these scriptures? Yes. Holy men of God spake as they are moved by the Holy Ghost, by the Amen. Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit inspired the Word. And the way that we know that it's the Holy Spirit, because there's two spirits, one Bible. Mm. And the way that you know it's the Holy Spirit is through the Word. Amen. It's through the Word. And so you have continuity in the Amen. Bible. I'm going through a situation right now dealing with a young man and he's hungry for Jesus. So he says. Mm. And so of course, you know, fantastic. Let's see where this leads us. And so we have a weekly, we have our weekly little session and absolutely I'm just I'm seeing a miracle happen in front of me mm. during this last month. He is truly, I'm learning what it means to hunger mm. and to thirst for God. This is all he can mm. talk about. Mm. And mm. As, as we read this, I, I went direct, my mind just took me there. Teach me to do your will. This is what he's praying. Mm. Mm. Basically, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. Mm. I'm ready. Now we're looking at the fruit. What are, what are we going to be producing here? We don't know yet, you know, mm -hmm. but it certainly is beginning to blossom. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I'm going to remember and I'm going to share this with him this next week. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a blessing. It's a blessing to see someone that's mm -hmm. hunger mm -hmm. and thirsting. Mm -hmm. Now, that's one of those terms you throw out there, you know, that this is a big boy term, but do you really see it? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. what a gift this is right now. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the way that you find out the will of God is, is through His Word. Amen. The Word is the most specific, um, cognitive, cogent means that God has chosen to communicate to us. And I've been in situations in, in prophecy meetings where 
uh, an individual says, look, that's not what the Spirit is telling me. Mm. Uh, you, you give them a Bible study and they say, ah, I've mm. had an experience with the Spirit and that's not, well, well, you need to question that Spirit. Mm -hmm. Amen. Because that yeah. Spirit is not the Spirit of truth that is leading mm. us into the Word. So the Spirit will never contradict the, the Holy Word. And, mm. and Jesus says He is the Word. And so there's a lot of this uh, in, in the Godhead, there's this cooperative element that, that takes place. And the way that we perceive Jesus, the Word, is through the Holy Spirit. Amen. And it's not always apparent, just like Jesus, a carpenter walking 2,000 years ago with a bunch of fishermen. For the scholar, the skeptic, they didn't see anything. They just saw a poor peasant. Mm. But to the Spirit-filled disciple, mm. they saw him. And they said, no. that's the Son of God. Amen. That's the Son of God. That's and and the only way we can know this is, is through the Word, because to the skeptic, this is just a book. Yes but through the Holy Spirit, we can see that it's the Word of Amen. God. Thank you for sharing that. Amen. Now, I love the word hope mm -hmm. in the Greek. You know what it means? We, we use it like, oh, I hope we get to go on vacation. We've been saying this for years. I hope we get to go on vacation. It's kind of like, oh, maybe it'll happen. But mm. in the Greek, mm. the word hope meant eager anticipation. You want to tackle Romans 15, 13? Yes, Romans 15, 13. Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. And hope is, is, is a unique relationship with the Spirit because the, the Bible says that the Spirit is the down payment it's the earnest of our redemption. So even though we don't have the experience of the second coming right now, we hope for that, that's the blessed hope, that when we have the Holy Spirit, mm. it's, it's the down payment, yes. it's the hope, mm. it's the internal hope that we have that the second coming, the blessed hope, is going to be a reality. And you know, when you go to buy something, like on Craigslist or on Facebook Marketplace, and, and you say, like, look, um, I want to buy this. Just so you know that I mean what I say, yeah. here's a down payment. Yeah. Yeah. Here it is. And that person takes that down payment, and they're like, it's not just, it's not just a, you know, I wonder if this person's going to come. No, you're like, no, this person means what he says because he just gave me cold yeah. cash, yeah. and I have it in my hand, and I, and I know that that person is going to come back and fulfill the rest of it. And yeah. it's the same way with Jesus. He says, look, if you ever wonder whether I'm going to finish this thing in your life, I'm going to, I, I finish what yeah. I start. Mm. Oh. Just so you know that, here it is. In Philippians 1.6, yeah. he who's begun a good yeah. work in you will be faithful yeah. to complete it. Yeah. So, you know, we could do this uh, all night, but we want to get, uh, let me just kind of, sum up what we've said so far. The Holy Spirit is our greatest need. We need the indwelling of the Holy Spirit to have Christ living in our hearts through faith. We need the indwelling of the Holy Spirit to understand God's Word. We need Him to pray. And I, I recommend that you start your prayers off saying, Oh, Holy Spirit, help me pray. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes if I say that, and mm -hmm. I don't remember it every time, but when I say, Holy Spirit, lead my prayer, mm -hmm. all of a sudden I find myself praying for someone. And not too long ago, God just told me, call them now in the middle of the prayer. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it really prevented a very serious decision on their part. Mm -hmm. And God rescued them. I wouldn't have known I wasn't thinking of it. We need the Holy Spirit to change our flesh nature. Mm. We can't do it by our own power. We need the Holy Spirit to make a level path for our feet and teach us God's will and have us walk in His path of life. We need the Holy Spirit to be filled with hope. And boy, I guarantee you, if the world need anything now, it's mm. hope. It's something that's an assurance, the title deed to God's promises. But here we go. Nope. How do we receive the Holy Spirit? Luke 11 and verse 9. I'm going to start there and okay. I'll let 
David, you can go after anybody that wants, but mm -hmm. here's what Jesus said. I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Mm -hmm. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be open to you. I love what the Greek says. These are linear verbs. What a better translation into English would have been this. Jesus said, I tell you, ask and keep on asking mm -hmm. for it will be given to you. Seek and keep on seeking mm -hmm. for you will find. Knock and keep on knocking mm -hmm. for the door will be open to you. Mm -hmm. This is a continuous mm -hmm. action. And so then what are we, what does he sum this up? What are we asking for, David? Yes, for everyone who asks receives and he who seeks finds and to him who knocks it will be opened. For if a son asks for bread from any father among you, will he give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will he give him a serpent instead of a fish? Or if he asks for an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? And this passage, look, mm. I've quoted this passage <laughs> 9 through 13, 13 yeah. the first half of 13, for ages. You know, oh, Lord, give me that new car. And you said, ask and you <laughs> shall receive. I, you know, I want, a, I want a, a nicer suit. Oh, Lord, you, you said. But, but if you read here, the context of this, he's talking about the Holy Spirit. Amen. And I think so many times we get caught up in the physical. And I, and I think we should pray for the physical. Don't get me wrong. But how much more mm. the spiritual because oh, there are amen. certain prayers that are always yes prayers. Yes. As for forgiveness, it's always yes. Yes. As for a Christ-like temper, it's always yes. Mm. As for the Holy Spirit, it's always yes. Always. Yes for a new car, it's not always yes. No. <laughs> you know, it's not always yes. It may not be in your best interest. Yep. But when it comes to the Holy Spirit, God's like, that's a always. yes prayer. Holy Spirit, that's a yes prayer. I want to be like Jesus. That's a yes prayer. And this is one of those. You can go to the Father in Jesus' name and say, Lord, I need the Holy Spirit. Amen. And you can walk away from that prayer and say, I believe it by faith, because that's a yes prayer. Amen. That's and you, prayer. I love that you yeah. said that because yeah. God always answers prayer. Some people say, well, God doesn't answer my prayers. Yes, yes He does. Yes. If it's spiritual, it's yes. yes. If it's against His will, it's no. Yes. Sometimes <laughs> it's, it's just wait yes. later it's coming and he usually when he has us wait it's so much better than what we thought um i just want to point out in verse 13 mm. when he says how much more will your heavenly father give the holy spirit to those who ask and keep oh, on yes. asking mm. why do we need to keep on asking mm -hmm. you know this 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 comes at the end of a fascinating parable that Jesus told. And it's the, it's the parable of that man that's in his bed with, with his family and he's got the lights out and, and his neighbor comes to him who has a, has a guest and says, uh, I got no bread. And he comes in the middle of the night and he just, he just keeps on knocking. And, and Jesus tells this person is reluctant. And finally, because the person keeps on knocking, he goes and gives him the bread. Now, the point of the parable is not to present this picture that God is up there reluctant, but the point, the punchline of that parable is the word persistence. Amen. Because of the person's persistence, the person gets up. And, and then he goes into this and he says, keep on asking. In other words, we need to persist in our prayers for the Holy Spirit, not because God is going to say, look, you've asked 99 times, you ask 100, you're going to get him. <laughs> and, you know, it's this whole meritorious thing. But the reality is, is that there's something about persistence that increases my capacity to receive the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. In other words, mm. it changes me. In other words, God wants to give us the greatest gift to us that he could ever give give, but my capacity is not there. I'm not able to receive it. And so there's something transformative that happens in my life I like that. when we say, Lord, I need the Holy Spirit. It increases our appreciation, increases our earnestness, it increases our capacity 
to receive the Holy Spirit. So that when God says, okay, I'm going to give him to you, Did you that we're ready. Well, and it also increases our relationship. Absolutely. You know, the connection. That's exactly don't you, right. Don't you think it cr increases our awareness? Oh, you absolutely. know, because God's whole plan of salvation, and, and this just blows people's minds when you say it, mm. but God's whole plan of salvation is by grace through faith is for us to be dependent Absolutely. upon him. Absolutely. And sometimes we can, I can be doing a good work, you know, I can just get up and be doing a Bible study or putting a sermon together. And if I'm doing it in my flesh, mm -hmm. like I said, there's not the anointing. I have to recognize mm -hmm. my dependence upon God. Mm -hmm. And I, I will say this too. I think the reason we have to keep asking is because we're leaky vessels. Ah, yeah. mm -hmm. You know, I, we I, I know, just like the story that I just said about my sister and me mm -hmm. losing it, the Bible says we can grieve the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. We do something wrong, it grieves Him. We can resist the Holy Spirit when He's trying to convict us of that, saying, you're going the wrong direction. We can just say, out of the way, this is the way I'm going. Right. But we can also quench the Holy Spirit. Mm. That's what I had done that day mm. when I lost my temper at my sister. I had quenched the Holy Spirit. I'm writing a book for God's glory. And that's what I said. It was like suddenly what I'm writing, I'm looking through it. Mm. It was all very accurate mm. according to scripture. Mm -hmm. There was no anointing. Mm -hmm. it, it somehow lost that love touch of mm. God. So it's, it's very important, and, and let's just talk about one thing. Le you want to take this one, Tanil, and it's John sure. 14, verses 16 and 17, because we want to talk about this. Sure. What is important for us to receive the Holy Spirit? Yes, John 14, 16 through 17. If you love me, keep my commands. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever, the Spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. And, and we started off the program with this, mm -hmm. that there is a purpose statement here mm -hmm. that he says, Actually, it's 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 a condition here. Mm. He says, "If you love me, keep my commandments, and then mm. I will give you another helper." So there is some condition mm -hmm. of us obeying to the level we know. Mm -hmm. You want to talk mm -hmm. about Acts five thirty two? Mm -hmm. Acts five thirty two, and we are witnesses to these things, and so is also the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those. Who obey Him. So there's this obedience element to the Holy Spirit. And what, what I like to call this is that in our relationship with God, it's cooperation, mm -hmm. but it's also what, what we call bilateral in terms of there is a reciprocal element. Yes. In other words, yes. God extends His grace to us. We respond by saying, Lord, I give you my heart, Amen. and then well, I, I choose to have you not only as Savior, but Lord of my life, Amen. and that, that Lordship is an important condition, according to these texts, of having the indwelling Spirit in our life. Because the Holy Spirit brings with Him power, brings with Him illumination, but if we're not following God with the light that we have, then why, God's like, why am I gonna give you more power? And, and we can only power? be filled with the Holy Spirit to the degree we're emptied of self. Absolutely. So, you know, I have long used, I heard a, a pastor probably 40 years ago mm -hmm. who was talking about if you've got a bucket of muddy, inky looking water, you pour water into it. Well, it begins to look a little clear. You pour more water, it looks a little clear. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it is only as, you know, it takes a lot of pouring. <laughs> <laughs> I love that, yeah, what you yeah. said about the priest and pouring yeah. the oil in. Mm. It takes, we can't, and, and I'm going to tell you something. If you look through the book of Acts, 
There were times when the disciples, it says, you know, at Pentecost, and they were filled with the Holy Spirit mm. and everything was shaken. But then it happens again later. So mm. it's not something that we can hold on to, to mm. grasp mm. that 100% filling of the Holy Spirit. Mm. It's just moment by moment mm -hmm. as we walk in surrender. Mm -hmm. We've only got a minute left. Mm -hmm. Do you want to touch on the three kinds of people? I don't yes. think you can do that. Yeah, very quickly. You know, the Bible points out that there's three types of people the Spirit-filled, the natural man, which has the absence of the Spirit, and the third is the carnal Christian. The carnal Christian is one that has the semblance of Christianity, but has certain elements of, of the absence of the Spirit, and it's really Laodicea's problem. You're neither hot nor cold, and the solution to Laodicea is Revelation 3.20. Jesus is knocking on the door of our hearts, and He wants to come in. How does He come in? through the agency of the Holy Spirit. So that's the solution for Laodicea and the carnal Christian. Amen. Uh, Tennille, thank you for being here. Thank you for giving up this time with Hudson and Clara. <laughs> David, we're just so glad. And I don't know if you all have watched David's program, The Sanctuary, The... Salvation and Our Savior. Salvation and Our Savior. Wonderful program on The Sanctuary. Honey, thank you for being here. Amen. Our prayer for you at home. Oh, please recognize the Holy Spirit is your greatest need. We need to pray every day and throughout the day. Oh, Lord, lead me, fill me by your Holy Spirit. Pray for him before you open up the Bible even. And our prayer for you is that the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit will be with you always. Happy Sabbath. <laughs>